Sending the same emails and writing the same text is driving me mad. How can I stop the redundancy and do this more efficiently? Hello, friend. Thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Brassy Broadcast. I'm Jen Eads. I'm a musician, a student of the creative universe, and a curious girl full of questions. I'm also the head broad in charge at the Brassy Broadcasting Company, where I partner with the creators, the doers, and the makers of the world to put them in the ears, heads, and hearts of new audiences with podcasts and other audio goodness. When you're ready and want more in-depth one-to-one coaching on your podcast workflow, audio quality, or help jumping some other podcasting hurdle, click the link in the show notes. And if you click that link before December 31st of 2017, it's going to take you to the Brass Tax Podcasting Toolkit page, where you can schedule a one-hour strategy session with me to learn how to get the most out of the tools, templates, and tactics that I'm including in the Brass Tax Podcasting Digital Toolkit at the special price of $97. This self-contained podcaster's digital toolkit has tools, templates, and tactics to help you build a strong foundation to support your podcast. Now let's talk about how to get your sanity and your time back. While producing an interview-based podcast, I found that I spent a good deal of time communicating with guests and potential guests via email. I also discovered that I was repeatedly saying the same things in these emails. And these emails included pitching guests to come on the show, then getting them scheduled, and outlining expectations and details of the interview. Then there was the follow-up email that went out after the show was live that included links to the show that made it easy for them to share with their audiences. That's a lot of email and a lot of wasted time if you're starting from scratch every time you compose a new email. Stop that madness. Create an email template that you can send or copy and paste when needed. You can always customize it. And in fact, there are parts of these emails that should be customized based on your guest, but that discussion is going to be for another day. I use Gmail, and Gmail has a magical feature called Canned Response. It allows you to create templates for the emails you find yourself repeatedly sending, and it's a huge time saver. If you're using a calendar scheduling app, like Calendly or Acuity Scheduling, you can also create emails that will go out to your guests that include all of the necessary info when your guest schedules their interview. I just started using Acuity Scheduling for appointments like consulting sessions and podcast interviews. Like, I mean, I'm still in the free trial period started using Acuity Scheduling, and I dig it so far. At this point in my free trial period, I've already created a client take-in form, set up a receipt that gets emailed after a call is scheduled and paid for, or someone purchases the Brass Tax Digital Podcasting Toolkit. And I'm still experimenting with setting up emails that go out immediately after an appointment is scheduled based on the type of appointment that is scheduled. An unexpected bonus is that this is really forcing me into managing my schedule and being intentional with my time. Immediately sending out an email when an appointment or interview is scheduled gives you the opportunity to set and manage expectations for your guest. Let them know how long it should be, if there's anything they need to test or download prior to your scheduled interview time. If you're using Zoom or Skype to record an interview, let your guest know that they need to have downloaded and tested it prior to your scheduled interview time because it's going to take a few minutes then they can troubleshoot any issues that arise before you're supposed to be recording. My production process involves a lot of writing. Bear, B-E-A-R, is my go-to writing app for just about everything I do for podcasting. I use it for everything in my podcast workflow, interview prep for notes and questions, scripting, and show notes. It allows you to sync across devices. This is why it's so handy. 
I do most of my prep on my laptop, but when I actually record, I'm sitting at my desktop. And that is why that sync feature is so critical in my workflow. For PC and Android folks, Evernote would be a comparable app. I copy my show notes straight from Bear and paste them right into my Libsyn episode description. I also have a note in Bear that contains all of my social media hashtags and links so that I can copy and paste those. I've used Bear to script every single one of these 30 brass tacks of podcasting wisdom episodes so that I can easily export the document into a PDF with the full episode transcript that contains any links mentioned in the show. And you're going to get all 30 transcripts and sample email templates I use to communicate with guests if you go and purchase the toolkit. See how I work that plug in there? Sneaky podcaster. And Bear has the flexibility to let you export a note in a variety of formats. The bonus gift in creating templates is clarity. Creating templates forces you to get crystal clear on exactly what you want to communicate. It also creates consistency in your messaging and communication. And consistency is a good thing in building a solid foundation for your podcast. To get the full transcripts for the 30 days of Brass Tacks Podcasting Wisdom, along with sample templates mentioned and all 30 podcast episodes, click the link in the show notes. It's going to take you to brassybroad.com forward slash brass tax podcasting tool hit. Instagram is my jam. You can connect with me there to get the behind the scenes where my podcasting and musical worlds collide. For my podcasting tutorials, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube at Jen Eads Brassy and Eads is spelled E-D-D-S. Thanks for listening. Now get out in the world and do some good.